Here I want to show you, you can select and sort content within your tables. By hovering over, you can see the I-beam and clicking and dragging to select a cell. Or go ahead and go over to select, well, part of the row and then go down and pull back to select part of a column. Or you can start in the upper left-hand corner and, of course, pull down and over. You can go ahead and hover over to the left-hand margin of any cell to get a black arrow that points in. Don't go right on the border because then you'll get the arrows pointing in opposite directions to resize the cell. We just want to go into the margin between the contents and the border. When you see the black arrow, go ahead and click on it to select the contents of the entire cell. Double click to select the entire row. And then triple click to select everything. Not just the table and all the cells, but you can see additional paragraph markers, the entire document basically. You can, of course, go ahead and hover over on the left-hand side until you get the white pointer turning to the right. Click on it. Selects the entire row. And then you can click and drag and go row by row. You can also go to the top of any column until you can see a black arrow pointing down. Click on it. Selects the entire column. Click and hold, and you can go column by column. Or, if you don't like doing it that way, then make sure you have a cell selected anywhere within the table. Come up here, click on the Layout tab. Go to the table group and click on select, and you can select a cell, the cell that I'm currently in. Click on the drop down arrow, select column, row, or the entire table, which by the way, let me click in a cell. You can come in the upper left hand corner and click on the tag, and it'll select the entire table as well. Now let's go ahead and learn how to sort. So if I want to be able to sort everybody by name or by place, and then of course make sure your cursor is flashing within the table so you can come up here to its related contextual well the layout tab in the data group has the sort feature so go ahead and click on it opens up the window and working from left to right first of all what do you want to sort by it's got by place what other options do you get well it says place because it's ghosting it's probably what i had selected before i clicked on sort but it's identifying it by columns one two and three and we got a total of three columns right well, my first row here is the header row. In other words, it has headings for each of the columns. So I want to make sure that down below that my list has a header row. Because if I don't, and I sort this, like by the first column, ascendingly, and it takes the first letter in the column here, which is the S for Simpson, J for Jackson. And if I do it ascendingly, it'll be A to Z. So the S will be towards the bottom, and then F and G will be towards the top, but it'll also include the name. And I don't want the label or the row header to be sorted with all the other data. So I have to define it and say, keep it separate. But what's nice about that when I choose this is that when I come back up here and click on the drop-down arrow, hey, looky there. It's not generic. It doesn't have column 1, column 2. Well, it has column 3 because I don't have anything in there that labels that column. And so you can imagine if I had a lot of columns, I'm like, okay, which column is it? Column 2, column 3? Let me take a look. Is that the place? Oh, that's the place. It's column 2. And then come down. No. You can just go ahead with it identified as the header row. It'll automatically pull in the labels from that row and place them in the corresponding column. So column 2 is place. So let's go ahead and select name. And then over to the right, the type. The data type there is text. If it was a number or date, then you want to choose it correspondingly, of course. Let's select text and we can do ascending. Now remember, it's going to pick the first letter in that cell and sort it by that letter. So first letter of all these people's last names. So I go ahead and click okie dokie and oh, ooh, let's check it out. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I know my song and it checks out. Cool. W down at the bottom. As opposed to, well, coming back up here, clicking on the sort button and, well, not having a header row reverts back to the default. Um, actually, I don't want to do a consecutive sort, so let's do none here. But come back up here and say you want to sort the first column. So where's it going to sort the N? Well, first letter here should be somewhere here. Let's go ahead and click okie dokie. And there you go. You sorted your labels or your header row, the headings for each column, as part of the data. Oh, that's just terrible. So you want to go ahead and undo this, and if you can't undo it because you closed out of the session, saved it as is, then you'll have to go ahead and cut and paste that up above so it's back into the header row, and then, well, I hit undo. And then, of course, when you click on sort, make sure you choose header row so it doesn't take that heading and sort it with the rest of the data.
Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.